Good morning, Nathan here from the photography team. Uh, in this quick little video, I'm going to do a quick initial review of the IBIS on the Fuji X-H1. Um, I'm going to compare it to the to the X8, X-T2. Sorry. Um, currently filming with the X-T2, so you'll also be able to see the um, differences in uh, video quality. With the cameras I use, I'm going to be using the 90mm lens prime, I'm going to be shooting at f2.8 um, and I'm going to be shooting at a variety of ISOs and a variety of shutter speeds. So when we actually come to review the images, we'll be able to see um, obviously the ISO performance and also the, um, the low light performance as in using the inbuilt image stabilisation. So let's crack on. You can't see what I'm shooting, but I have a vintage camera on a tripod this end of my lounge. Um, it's a simple test, but obviously in, in the near future, we'll probably take the cameras out to a more um, sort of relevant place like a church and do some further tests. <clears throat> but let's start now then. So we're obviously using the new shutter as well in the... XH1, which is again uh, helps with <coughs> sort of camera shake. The shutter button has been redesigned, so it's going to be it's going to be a good comparison. So what I'm going to do first is I'm starting at um, 250th of a second at ISO 6400. <coughs> That's should be fine. I mean, even without IBIS, you should be able to um, freeze freeze. Or get a sharp shot with with that setting. Obviously, if your subject is moving, then IBIS isn't going to help you freeze that. But we're sort of using this in relation to when we're shooting a, a wedding at a church. <clears throat> the bride and couple they obviously are most of the time still, so that does help. Okay, let's start then. I'm going to tuck my elbows in to try and get a very steady shot. Okay, so there's the first shot. They're going to move everything down a stop. So I'm going to go to 3200 ISO and I'm going to go to 125th of a second. Do the same again. I'm using the center focus point and I'm just focusing in on the branding on the camera. Let's go down again. So that's 1600 ISO and we'll go to 160th of a second. It's obviously with without stabilization at this point you would be struggling uh, let's now go down to 800 iso and 1 30th of a second and with the inbuilt image stabilization i have it set to always on so when you're when you're composing the image you can actually see the stabilization working and it is actually very effective those of you that do have lenses with image stabilization, you'll know exactly what I mean. So let's drop it down another stop. We're going to go to ISO 400 and 1 15th of a second. So we've got that shot. I'm going to take them one shot as well. I'm not going to take a, a, a number of shots, so just one at each setting. Then we'll drop this down to ISO 200 and we'll go to one eighth of a second. Now obviously we really are starting to push this camera now. So let's get this last shot. I think I may have moved on that shot. But anyway, we'll see. And for the last shot, we'll go to ISO 100, which is obviously an expanded ISO in the um, X-H1. And we'll go to one fourth of a second. <sighs> well, that was slow. But anyway, so that's the test shots in the X-H1. I'm now going to swap bodies and obviously we'll film with the uh, X-H1 and we'll do the same tests. Okay, so I've now swapped cameras around. I'm now filming with the X-H1 
Um, for both of these scenarios, I'm using the 16 millimeter f1.4 lens, um, and I'm giving a turner a go. So we're filming in full 4K and testing the new film preset, a turner. Anyway, let's crack on. So obviously now we are, we have the X-T2, a great camera, don't get me wrong. And we're gonna do the same tests again. So this time we're at 6400 ISO, 250 of a second and f2.8. I'm just going to turn the um, beep on. I've obviously got that turned off because last time I used this I was obviously at a wedding. The only reason I'm doing that is so you can hear sort of focusing speed as such so here we go 250 for a second i can already see the difference looking through the viewfinder so that's the first one drop it a stop so 3200 and i set and 125th of a second Now again, another stop. So we'll go to 1600 ISO and 160th of a second. I can already feel myself struggling. <laughs> Let's go down again to 800 and a 30th of a second. Now, obviously, in a real life or a real photo shoot, I don't think you'd be using it at this shutter speed. Oh, God. It's getting hard. 400 ISO, 15th of a second. You've got to be a statue to be able to take pictures that are going to be not blurry at this speed so but I mean you can tell the difference with the shutter as well by using the X-T2 compared to the X-H1 the X-H1 shutter is is just butter smooth it's, it's lovely right we're going to go to an eighth of a second at ISO 200 wish me luck oh god a lovely blurry image through the viewfinder and we're going to go to a hundred and we're going to go to a fourth of a second now let's really try and stable myself for this one and if you want to be a sniper you do the breathing as well so you breathe in and then you'll hold your breath But I don't th even think that helped me with that shot. But anyway, that's the shots taken with the uh, with the X-T2. I'm going to get on the computer now and just um, compare these two together. From what I can tell looking through the viewfinder, I mean, that image, uh, the in-body image stabilisation is just fantastic. Um, now, there's been a lot of sort of comments on social media that, that the X-H1 is solely for video shooters and that the, the stabilisation is only good for, sh for video shooters. But what do you think? To, to me, as a photographer, I think that is, is uh, amazing and that's a, that's a really good feature to have, especially as a wedding photographer when in the UK, most of the times the weddings are in a dark church. And just being able to drop those settings a bit is going to be fantastic. But anyway... That's me talking without looking at the images. So let's get these images up onto the computer and see whether I'm correct. Okay, so we're at the computer now and I've, I've just brought the images into Lightroom. The only thing I've done with them is I've, um, I've changed the white balance and I've added a little bit of contrast. Uh, detail tab. <clears throat> Um, sharpening and noise reduction is, is just a standard setting that I have. So there's a little bit of noise reduction and a little bit of sharpening. Let's close that panel. Okay, so comparing the two images side by side, we've got the X-H1 on the left 
and the XT2 on the right. These first two are at uh, 1 250th of a second. 2.8 ISO 6400, and obviously we're using the 90 uh, millimeter lens. So let's go in one to one. Now, there may be odd color differences, um, but obviously the, lens, the sensors are identical, but obviously we have in-body in image stabilization on the X-H1. So if we look at both of these pictures, they're both lovely and sharp. There's, there's no issue with those um, images at 1 to 50th, and you'd expect that on both cameras anyway. Let's now move up to... 1 1 25th of a second. Again, we have the X-H1 on the left and the X-T2 on the right. Um, again, lovely and sharp. I think I may have misfocused on the X-H1, which isn't <laughs> really ideal, but um, we're still sharp. You know, there's no, uh, there's no blurriness in the image. It's just me that's made an error and misfocused. Um, obviously, with the X-T2, we're still lovely and sharp, which is great. Okay, so here we are at 1 60th of a second with the X-H1 on the left and the X-T2 on the right. Um, both lovely and sharp. I will give the X-H1 the edge on this one. This is more, the, the actual font here is more sharper than on the X-T2. But there's nothing wrong with that shot from the X-T2. That's nice. Um, at 1 60th of a second. Now this is where it all changes. So let's bring in the... Uh, where are we? Okay, so here's the X-H1. Right, here we go. This is where the X-H1 comes into its own. This is 1 30th... One or a 30th of a second so this is a slow shutter speed also if you're using a 90 mil you really need to be looking at a hundred um, a hundredth of a second shutter speed and higher but as you can see the xh1 has nailed that the in-body image stabilization has, has frozen that image which is great and unfortunately with the xt2 um, it's lost um, you've got to be really steady to hold a 90 mil at that shutter speed, and unfortunately, I wasn't able to do that. Um, so let's now move on. Now this is again, I, I can't believe how... Uh, how amazing this is. This is a 15th of a second. Um, and again, it's it's a lovely image. There may be a tiny bit of blur in this one, and that's probably my fault again. But looking at the X-T2 now, well, that um, that's gone. That, that's not usable at all. We move on again. This is an eighth of a second. And just look at that. Look at that from the X-H1, an eighth of a second with a 90 millimeter lens. I mean, that's sharp. That's, I mean, that's excellent. And obviously, unfortunately with the X-T2, couldn't handle that. We've got a lovely blurry image. But this next shot, I went up to a, a fourth of a second now this is where I am totally amazed. Look at that shot at a fourth of a second on a 90 millimeter lens. That is tack sharp. I, I can't believe how well the in-body image stabilization has done on that image. And as we expected, unfortunately, with the X-T2, well, there it is, a blurry image. Um, obviously, you've probably been looking at the the sort of noise performance as well through those images. 
but if we just have a quick look again we'll we'll bring up the xh1 at 6400 iso so th there's no flash issues on these obviously so just as a quick reference there's the noise at 6400 iso the blacks here are perfect there's no issues there yes we've got a tiny bit of grain in the uh, sort of background but i'm zoomed in at one to one if we were to look at one of these full screen let it render um you know there's no issues there so i hope you enjoyed that video and that just shows you what the in-body image stabilization can do for you um you know that's that just proves that that feature is is a must for any um sort of uh, photographer not just videographers there have been comments that that uh, people saying that this camera is only for videographers but that shows that that it's great you know um low light performance is good I'm really looking forward to getting this lens, this camera out at our next wedding and testing these features in a live in a live shoot. I think that uh, that feature is going to be a game changer in the Fuji world. Anyway, my name's Nathan. Please comment, like, and subscribe. Um, let me know what your thoughts are. Do you agree with people that say it's only for videography? Do you agree with me that that it's going to be great for uh, for photography? Just let us know in the comments below. As, as always, thanks for watching. The photography team, my name's Nathan. Goodbye.